Hey, it's Trevor, and this is Discovering Gay History. When it is day six of the Black Lives Matter revolution happening here and all across the world, um, I want to encourage you to do some reading. I'm going to put some resources down below. Donate, protest if you can, if you're comfortable. Don't be silent. I just want to say that before we get into it especially with the queen we're talking about today. Uh, another disclaimer, you may hear jackhammering in the background. I have put off recording for many days because there is construction going on down the street. So I apologize. We're just gonna power through it. We're gonna gay power through it. Are you with me? Okay, here we go. Today we are talking about the sensational Stormy de la Vie. Here we go. Stormy was born in 1920 to a black mother and a white father in Louisiana. She had no birth certificate, so she chose her birth date as December 24th. So being half white and half black in the 1920s in Louisiana, in the South, was difficult. She once said in an interview that she still has scars on her legs. When she was a child, these bullies hung her by her legs from a, a fence post and her brother had to come pull her down. And then as a teenager, she started singing in jazz clubs in New Orleans. Uh, she came out as a lesbian at the age of 18 and moved to Chicago where her singing career began. Stormy had a partner for 25 years. Her name was Diane and she died in 1970. Stormy carried a photo of Diane in her wallet for the rest of her life. Stormy was a jazz singer who started singing as a woman and then later started doing drag as a drag king, also singing jazz. She joined a jazz group and even toured Europe. And for a short time, she rode horses for the Ringling Brothers Circus. When she fell off the horse and was injured, she left the circus. I mean, this woman, <laughs> so cool. So Stormy was part of a famous review, jazz review, called the Jewel Box Review. It featured 25 high-kicking drag queens and one MC in a white tux singing jazz. And that was Stormy. She was the only drag king and was the MC for 14 years. They toured the country even, and in 1957, they could be seen twice a week at the Apollo Theater in Harlem. She was a pioneer in that the drag performers in this review only did drag at the review. What Stormy did was she brought drag into the streets and she dressed in men's clothing every day out in the open. She claims to have started like this butch um, expression movement in New York. Now remember, it was considered illegal to wear clothing of the opposite gender. Well, what she was doing was slightly dangerous. She could be arrested. So especially lesbians were targeted for this. There were raids where lesbians had to prove that they were wearing a certain percentage of made for women clothing. So they had to wear bra, panties, stockings underneath their men's clothing to prove that they were, they were meeting the, the percentage requirement of gender appropriate clothes. So the night of the Stonewall riots, so June 28th, 1969, all you homosexuals better know that date. If you learn anything from this series, you will take this date and you will tattoo it on your forehead. Stormy is there and the story goes like this. The cops were raiding the bar and Stormy had been hit on the head by an officer with a baton. One witness says that she told the officer that her handcuffs were too tight. She was bleeding from her head and she fought back, she struggled. So she's bleeding from the head, she's struggling because her handcuffs are too tight. She's being pushed and shoved and after being beaten by police into the back of the wagon and she cries out to the crowd of onlookers, why don't you guys do something? The crowd loses it. Stormy was the spark that started the Stonewall Riots. Now, a lot of people are going to say that Marsha P. Johnson started the Stonewall Riots. And while we owe Marsha a ton of respect, she herself says that she did not get there until well after the riots had started. After the riots and after the liberation movement had kickstarted, Stormy 
co-founded with a number of other people, the Stonewall Veterans Association, and she was later elected as vice president of the organization. Throughout the 80s and 90s, she acted as a bouncer for New York City lesbian bars, including one of my favorites, the Cubby Hole. And she also was the self-appointed guardian of the gays in, in downtown New York. She died in her sleep of a heart attack in 2014 in Brooklyn. Thank you, Stormy. I hope more people learn about you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, donate. Black Lives Matter. See you tomorrow.